greatest desire was the marriage of my elder brother Ananta. I was about 11 years old at the time of his betrothal. Mother was in Calcutta, joyously supervising the wedding preparations. Father and I remained alone at our home in Barely. We planned to join the family in time for the ceremony. Awaken your father. Take the first available train at 4 o'clock. Rush to Calcutta if you wish to see me alive. Look, father, father, mother is dying. We must rush to see her now. What? Never mind that hallucination of yours. Your mother is in excellent health. If we get any bad news, we shall leave tomorrow. You shall never forgive yourself for not starting now, nor shall I ever forgive you. If a child forgets its mother, will she coldly turn away? Wise or foolish, we're your children. Guide us, mother, if we stray. The melancholy morning came with explicit words. Mother dangerously ill, marriage postponed, come at once. Father and I left distractedly. Uncle, does my mother yet live? Of course she is alive. I don't believe you. Morning, I made a pathetic memorial pilgrimage to a large shade tree that shaded our lawn, <clears throat> mingling tears with the dew. I often observed an otherworldly light emerging from the dawn. Intense pangs of longing for God assailed me. Having lost my earthly mother and her dark eyes, I desperately sought the Divine Mother. I felt powerfully drawn to the Himalayas. Amar, are you sure nobody saw you sneaking out of school? Positive. Did anyone see you leaving your house, Makunda? I passed my uncle, but I don't think he suspected anything. Good, your brother and Nantes are a shark detective, but he won't be looking for three boys in English clothes. <laughs> <laughs> These canvas shoes hurt my feet, Makunda. Why did you make us go roll the shoes to the cab driver? Articles of leather, begotten only through the slaughter of animals, must be absent on this holy trip. Ah, look, our train for birth one's about to leave. Let's take our seats. Just imagine, we shall be initiated by the masters and experience a trance of cosmic consciousness. Our flesh will be charged with such magnetism, even the wild animals of the Himalayas will come tamely near us. Tigers will be no more than mere house cats, awaiting our caress. Uh. Well, let the money be divided into three portions, so that each of us may buy his own ticket hardware. Thus, no one will surmise that we are running away together. Good idea, Lieutenant. Oh, look, we're here. I got my ticket. Did you get yours? Yes. Have you seen Jatinda? No, have you? No. But it's been 15 minutes! Jatinda! 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 Where are you, Jatinda? Oh, Amar, we must return home. Jatinda's callous departures with ill omen. This trip is doomed to failure. Is this your love for the Lord? Can't you stand a little test of a treacherous companion? You're right, Amar. Let's go to the platform. Amar, we may soon be close to question by the railway officials. I am not under, underrating my brother's ingenuity. No matter what the outcome, I will not tell a lie. All I ask of you, Akuna, is to keep still. Don't laugh while I'm talking. <laughs> you there! Are you running away from home in anger? No, not in anger. Where is the third boy? Come on, speak the truth. Sir, I notice you're wearing glasses. Can't you see that we are only two? I'm no magician. I cannot conjure up a third companion. 
I, well, what is your name? I'm called Thomas. I'm son of an English mother and a converted Christian Indian father. What is your friend's name? I call him Thompson. <laughs> well, jolly good. Allow me to seat you in a European compartment. Wouldn't want two half-English boys riding with the natives. <laughs> While you are outwitting that station official, I contrived to read the telegram from my brother. It said, three Bengali boys running away from home toward Hardwar via Mogul Sarai. Please detain them until my arrival. Ample rewards for your services. But how does he know? I told you not to leave marked timetables in your home. Brother must have found one there. Sorry. Look, we've just arrived at Hardwar. I have a bad feeling. Let's quickly buy our tickets for Rishikesh. Hold it right there. Ananta, you should not have stopped us. Amar, mother sent me to get you. Will you please come home with me? Yes, dear brother. I will come. I don't know what I was thinking. How could I leave my family? Ananta, I hope to find a spiritual teacher in the Himalayas. I will never abandon my quest for a guru who will reveal Divine Mother to me. All I ask is you return with me to Calcutta to visit your grieving father. Then you can resume your search. So, Mr. Detective, how did you find that I had fled with two boys? At your school, I found Amar had left his classroom and not returned. I went to his home and unearthed the marked timetable. Amar's father was just moaning to the coachman that his son had disappeared. The driver told us he had taken Amar and two friends, dressed in European clothes, to the train station. He said he had remembered them because they had given him the gift of their shoes. Thus I had three clues, the marked timetable, the trio of boys, and the English clothing. Our generosity to the coachman was slightly misplaced. I rushed to send telegrams to all the station officials. I then learned that Jatinda had been absent one night, but returned home the next morning, dressed in European garb. I went to his home, invited him to dinner, and he unsuspectingly agreed. I led him to a police station where he quickly submitted to the questioning of a fierce-looking official. Jatinda said he had departed in high spirits, but when he started talking about petting tigers, he was afraid of being eaten. Ananta, you are a born sleuth hound. But I must admit some satisfaction that Jatinda too did not escape an encounter with the police. Mother, I give you my soul, 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 God. You can't remain hidden anymore. You can't remain hidden anymore. Give my mother a soul, soul. Thank you.